In this video, we'll look at what happens when we put potassium chlorate in water. That's KClO3 plus H2O. So potassium chlorate, that's a solid, let's put a little S here, and water is a liquid, so we'll put an L here. Potassium is a metal, and then this chlorate ion, that's made up of nonmetals. So when we have a metal and nonmetals, that's an ionic compound, and often they're soluble in water. But we should check a solubility table to see if that's the case for KClO3. On our solubility table, these are the positive ions, the cations, and we go down, we're looking for potassium, that's right here, and then chlorate, we're looking for that, that's an anion, it's negative, it's ClO3 minus, the chlorate's right here. So we'll go down where they meet, and we see that we have an S. That S means that potassium chlorate is soluble in water. So let's go back to our equation. Since KClO3 is soluble, it'll dissolve in the water, it'll dissociate, break apart into those ions. We have the K plus, and then we have the ClO3 minus. So we put this in water, it dissolves, we end up with K plus plus ClO3 minus. Since the potassium chlorate that's dissolved in the water, we're going to write AQ after each one of these ions. AQ, that means aqueous or dissolved in water. So we don't need to write the water again on this side of the equation. The aqueous tells us that these are dissolved in water. Some people don't consider this a chemical reaction because it's easily reversible. If we let the water evaporate out, we get our KClO3 back as a solid. But either way, this is what happens when you put potassium chlorate in water. It dissolves into K+, the potassium ion, and the chlorate ion. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.